Right, hello everybody and welcome once again to yet another live feed. Okay, here we go. Now, as you can see, I'm working on an Osprey. I don't think you gathered that from what you can see on the screen. So what I need to do, looking at this, I'm going to work on the eye to begin with. Now, with all my paintings, as you probably know, I tend to get the background done first when I do add a background. And then I'll start with the eye. And from well, after I've done the eye, I then start working on all the details in between. So just give me a second while I just prepare myself ready for the paint. One second. Now looking at the colours, um, I'm trying to think of the colours on the photograph itself. So I'm going to show you the photo, just one second on there. So that's the photograph I'm working from. Now as you can see, there's a lot of kind of black, brown, there's even blues, there's even bits of red in there as well. And the eye itself is like, a, it's not just yellow, is it? It's like a hint of green in there. So there's all sorts kind of work through when I look at this. So that's what I'm going to work on as I go along. So if you've got any comments you want to ask, uh, please uh, post away. I don't mind at all. I don't bite. And we'll see how we get on from here. Now I'm going to work with my ceramic palette first. So I'm going to put a little bit of water in that. So bear with me a minute. All I do is use a little water spray bottle and just spray the palette first of all. And then I'll also spray the paints at the same time because my paints, which are these here lot, give them a quick spray a few minutes before you start normally. I didn't do it this time around. But normally before you start, give them a quick spray just to soften them in a little bit before you make a start on the painting. As you're looking at this, I just want to soften down some of the pencil marks which I've got on here now because it's a little bit too, too dark. Just like the soften with a putty rubber. Just knocks them back a little bit. I don't want the pencil marks showing through the paint really. So I like to kind of just ease them back. I'm not taking anything else off because these are quite dark around here as well, but they can stay put for now, so I won't be going there just yet. That'll be done at another point. Right, okay, here we go. Let's make a start. Now I'm gonna look at the colours I want initially. I'm gonna go for a bit of burnt umber, really. Honest, trust me. A little bit of burnt umber. And all I want this to be on the burnt on bits so like a like a bit of a milky consistency is what I'm looking for. So something like that. <laughs> Divis Concheros, hey, hello there. Hi Baza. Hi Liz. Hi Liz. Oh, I can oh, can't hear you. Oh. Can everybody hear me okay? Hopefully you can still hear me. Uh, showing that the audio is working okay. Please let me know. Thumbs up or whatever if you can hear me, okay? So a little bit of that. I'm going to go for a little bit of French ultramarine in there as well. And a bit more. Now you've got to bear in mind there's probably about a 20 second delay between what you see and when I actually record it. So I record it 20 minutes or 20 seconds, should I say, before um, you see it. So my delays may be a little bit longer after you. Oh yeah, volume is fine here. Thank you, Sue. Okay, <clears throat> so looking at the eye, I'm going to start off by trying to work out. I can just see my pencil marks on there anyway, just to define some of the edge using my double zero brush. I'm trying to see where the inner part of the eye goes there. Just before going with the yellow. Just want to just fade like this, seal that pencil in, and the same above the top, and the lower eyelid, and also probably just inside the eye there, it's a bit of a dark area, just in there, okay. So then what I've got to think about is probably the yellow as well, just one second. Okay, so the yellow I'm thinking about is probably like a lemon yellow to begin with. So where's my mixing brush just there? So I'm going to go for probably lemon yellow. Um, I may have just a hint, just a hint of indigo in there as well. Because I want a little bit of the green hue, but I'm going to go yellow first, I think, just to 
put a base layer down just a base layer now the yellow is going to be this one here again I want this to be like a milky consistency just for the eye I'm using a very old very old 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 acrylic brush which I've had for many many years in fact this particular brush did have paint on it once you can just see remnants of the paint that's how old it is <laughs> and that's all I use for mixing the paints with really so I'm going to go back to my double zero I think just because I just want to work on this gradually bit by bit so the idea of today is I'm going to work just on the eye. Now I was saying earlier on, I like to paint the eye first because, well, it's something that you look at, you know, when you're doing the painting. So I painted a wren the other day and I've painted, um, some, uh, what else did I paint the other day? Well, let's just say I've been painting quite a lot recently and try, trying to kind of keep, keep up and catch up. And the thing about when you paint the eyes, I say you, when I'm working all the feathers, for the rest of this uh, osprey, you find the eye itself is something you keep getting drawn back into. A bit of life in the painting before you even start on the body. So that's a little bit of lemon yellow in there just to begin with. So all I want, just as a foundation colour, just so I've got something to work on top of. Think about it in the sense of, you know when you, when you build a house, you put the foundations down first. Then on top of those foundations, you start building the walls, you build the structure. And that's roughly the way I tend to work with a painting. So I kind of work on the foundations first, then gradually build up as we go along. I'll just see what comments we've got before I carry on with this. One second. So, okay, volume fine here. Thank you. So, okay. Maybe hover over the video and adjust the volume on the right hand side. Maybe hover. I don't know what you mean, Liz. Hover over the video and adjust your volume on the right hand side. Oh! I see what you see now. <laughs> Sorted, my speakers were turned down. Duh. Okay. Yeah, I know, I got that as well, Sue, thank you. <laughs> cool, what you like, Liz? I don't know. Never mind, never mind. All right, so back to the yellow, because that will dry really quick. I've got some very warm lights here. I'm going to go for a little bit of, turn a little bit of indigo first. I don't want too much. Let's just try that in there now. Oh, you can just see it kind of taints it a little bit, just colours it slightly. Good brush and wash out again, a bit more indigo. Oh, caught the camera. Ah, now there we go. So a bit of a greeny tint to it. And if it's too green, we can always add a little bit more yellow to it. Again, we need this foundation wash on to be able to kind of work on top of. So, let's have a look. See how green this is. I don't want it too green. I want a little bit of orange in there as well. Just to kind of add a hint of this green in there. I don't want to put too much in, as I say. Now, as we all know with watercolour, it's all about building up in layers. You start off light and you get darker and darker as you go along. That's it. I'm going to get a little bit of cadmium orange. Now, the cadmium orange is going to go just into there. Pick some of that up. A bit more. Brush your brush out. One thing you shouldn't do, by the way, which is I'm trying to avoid here, is mixing the paint with your detail brushes because you can very quickly ruin your brush. All right, so I'm trying not to over mix it because I don't want to ruin my brush. This is a fairly new one. <laughs> I tend to use one of these probably over two or three paintings and they're not expensive. About, um, I think these are about £3.50 or something like that. They're not, not lots and lots of money. Well, that's some watercolour brushes can be. Now I'm going to start adding a few more colours in there. So this is going to be a little bit of that cadmium orange mixed with a yellow. So it's cadmium orange, lemon yellow, and just a hint of that, um, that indigo. Just in there. Now once that dries, I can start adding more detail over the top. So now we've got the foundation washing. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring this in just a little bit and towards the pupil itself. That'll do. Okay, now whilst that's drying, I know I just want to work on the eye today, but I don't have the blast of the hairdryer going. I, yes, I do own one, if anybody's seen me. I do own a hairdryer. Yeah, and I just want to go for another colour. I'm going to probably go for a basic wash on the beak. Now, for the beak itself, I could use that, which is that brownie blacky colour which is basically um, Burnt Umber and the French Ultramarine. 
I'm going to add a little bit of lamp black in there now. <laughs> I need to water that down, that's far too dark. So I need to make it to like a watery, very watery mixture as you can see there. Again for the beak I want to make sure that I've got some foundation wash in there to begin with. Just to kind of seal the paper in a little bit more, gives you something to work on top of. And that's how I tend to look at it. I think I'll go for the size 1 brush. Now here we go. So very lightly, very lightly, just add some water to the beak itself. So it's quite grey down there as well. I might have to have get a little bit of blue. So it's going to be that dark colour which I'm working on here a lot. And I'm going to get a bit of a little bit of French ultramarine. Ooh, hey, that's very blue, isn't it? Let's have a bit more of that. That's better. So I'm going to use that as well at the same time. So keep wetting down the beak. This again is just that first foundation wash. Just a little bit. I'll try and see if I can zoom in a little bit for you as well. So just bear with me a minute while I just go to the computer. Uh, oh, <laughs> I just said that Sue, thank you. Yeah, I can't zoom in too much Sue because of the fact is it could lose the focus. The way that it's all set up on the camera. There you go. So that should be a little bit closer on the eye, all right? So I can't really get much closer than that. Let's move it down a touch for you so you can just see that. Um, let's have a look. Is that a bit better for you? Okay. That's probably as best I can get on that. Because it's um, the camera itself is just a normal webcam. Uh, quite a good one, but you haven't got much in the way of zoom on it, so unfortunately. Okay, it's not one of these expensive super duper professional cameras. I wish it was. So I'm going to wet the beak one day, one day. Okay, and probably to this side here. Now anybody that's not on my Patreon channel, just let you know, have a look down there for patreon.com forward slash the Devon Artist. Um, I've got a lot of bird paintings on there and animals as well. I've done a horse, done a squirrel. We've done a variety of things, haven't we? We really have. And we've had some great, great fun doing those as well. But I do a lot of birds. And the birds which I do, I tend to choose birds which have got a bit more of a pose and they look quite nice. Something that's, which, you know, you wouldn't mind having on your wall, really. Which is the idea. So, so I really tend to carefully select the projects which... Um, my patrons do and birds is definitely one of them but we've also got a tiger or a tiger cup if anybody's interested in having a go at that as well if you want a free one i said this i know i say this a lot but there's a free one on there as well go to patreon.com forward slash devon and there's a free robin tutorial on there as well so you'd have to part with your email or anything like that it's all completely utterly utterly ha, free all right so it doesn't cost you a penny so if you want to pop along there, we'll look at it. And it's um, quite a lot of things, about three hours of video actually, I've put on there. And I've even put the reference drawing and the photograph there for you as well, which you can download and utilize. So you're more than welcome to. So I'm going to re-wet the beak now, because it's drying really quick under these lights. I've got two very large lights above me. I'm going to go in with that dark color now, which isn't dark because it's quite watery, but if it was thicker, it would be a lot darker. The thing with a lot of paints as well, I mean this colour I could use again to the same consistency over the top of this. Then every layer that I put on of the same paint will get darker and darker if I wanted to. But at the moment, I just want just a basic wash layer on there. Just under there. That's where a bit of the background uh, went over the beak there as well. So it goes to show you can just quickly repair something if need be. That's easy enough. Right, so while that's drying, I'm going to go back to the eye now because that's what we're here to work on. We'll try and work on how we can get some more detail in there. Okay, here we go. So, click on the little cross on it. Should it disappear? Oh. Yes, well said. Okay. I forgot I said that. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, okay. I'm going to tap some more of this greeny colour in there. I want to create like a texture within the eye, just a little bit. You can barely see it on the camera, I know. But trust me, it's all gonna build up gradually as we go along. 
then what you want to do I'm going to get some lamp black I'll show you that on the camera hopefully you can see this so lamp black how thick that is oh that's thick a bit more water to it so lamp black just to there now black on its own is quite bland quite flat so I tend to add a color to it and in this case, I think I'm going to go for blue. So I'm going to go for the French Ultramarine. Now, the thing with French Ultramarine is a granulating color. So in other words, it will eventually separate from inside there. You can see what I mean later on, actually, when I start using this. It starts to, uh, well, it starts to come away from the other colors it's mixed with. A lot of um, landscape artists use it that way because it creates a nice effect in the sky, like a very bitty kind of speckly effect. So that's just lamp black and French ultramarine I'm going to be using. So I'm wash that brush out again. Always wash your brush out in the dirty and in the clean. Now when I load my brush up, so what I say to all my patrons, I say, oh no, I'm going to repeat it again. You load it, you roll it, and then you, do you know what's coming next? You just dab it. Load it, roll it, dab it. And by doing so, it takes any residual paint off your brush okay so just bear that in mind now I want to pick out again just the outside edge of the eye now again if you've got any questions please ask and put a comment down below ask away well, you got me while I'm live online I will check this when it's not live as well by the way I do get notifications and people put a post when it's not live anymore because I make sure it stays on Facebook afterwards just very lightly using the very tip of the brush very tip of the brush barely touching the paper two airs and air I know two airs and air just very lightly outlining I'm going to do the same around the edge of the iris just to there this will need to go a lot darker than this we know that but I just want to get some colour in there first of all okay let's get a little bit more So a little bit thicker now, same colour, just slightly thicker, and to there, okay. You always know when I'm concentrating because I go very quiet. <laughs> so if you ask me a question that will keep me talking, okay. So just very carefully bringing this round. I want to make sure that this is not too too hard an edge as well. We will soften that down just a little bit in, in a short while. Now then, what I want to do, what I want to, no, that's something different, hang on. I'm going to take a little bit of paint off the brush now. Now here we go, are you ready for this? This is going to be stippling the eye. We're going to stipple the eye. Now I'm going to start from the outer edge of the iris just to there first, then very lightly, very lightly, barely touching the paper. In fact, I'll take some more paint off the brush. I've always got some tissue at hand, as you probably gathered. We do need a bit of a shadow around there as well, which is a shadow from the top eyelid. Just very lightly, barely touching the paper. See how fine I'm doing this? So that's how fine you want to do it. That's why it's always wise, <laughs> you're doing something detailed to have a, a new brush or a brush that's got a decent tip on it. So that's a good thing about this particular brush because it's um, it's not sable, this one, this is synthetic. And because of that, it's got a nice tip on it. It's not too bouncy. It's not too long. So I know um, Rosemary and Co, they do a, a nice brush, which is a spotter series. And other artists use those as well. I've used those. In fact, I've got some here. In fact, my size one brush, which is some using earlier on, was a spotter series. So that's a good one to use. If you want something to have a bit more control, try shorter bristle brushes. Brushes. I can't say that. Shorter bristle brushes. You try saying that, okay? Right. Just a little bit around there. Now, I'm going to come back in again, but this time I want to go in with a little bit of cadmium orange. Bear with me a minute off camera here. So a little bit of cadmium orange mixed into that yellowy greeny color <laughs> and some of that bluey black 
but not too much. Just takes them off my brush first. That's it. That's what I want. Something like that is all I want. Take some paint off the brush. Just remember, load it, roll it, and dab it. That's it. Then keep tapping all the time towards where the pupil is. Reload your brush because you're obviously picking up paint off the paper as well at the same time. And all we're doing, as I mentioned, is creating texture all the time, colour and texture. We don't want this looking too orange in there, but I do need to think about where it's got to go, especially around this side of the iris as well, because it's a bit of a curve. I want to kind of show a curve. Just a bit more. Okay, just check for any comments there. One second. Okay, what we got? Uh, didn't work. Why is that? <laughs> okay, better if I come to my PC. Yeah, thank you. Deva Vasconcelos. Hola, buenos dias. See you there. Oh, yeah. Good. Uh, now I can see. Oh, buenos status. Uh, hee hee. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Which bush is that? Paint's great, right? No, it's not, actually. No, this is the. Um, I'll tell you the brush first. This particular brush is a Winsor & Newton, and it's the series 111. I hope if you can just about make that out on the camera there. So Winsor & Newton is a Cotman range, and it's series 111, and it's the size is double zero. So this is the one I tend to use a lot of. As I said, they're not expensive brushes. But that's not why I buy them. I buy them because, well, okay, I'll tell a tell lot. I do buy them because they're not expensive, but, but I get used to them. I've, I bought them initially because they weren't expensive, and... I've got so used to using them over the years is that um, it's become my favourite brush, my kind of go-to brush. However, saying all that, I do have other brushes I'm prepared to try out and test on Patreon. So anybody on Patreon and my members over there will soon get videos on me testing different brushes out. Because there's so many on the market, there really is. So I bought some new ones in on purpose, ready to video, just solely for Patreon. Now. Looking at this now, what I want to do is very lightly soften it down. Now, you know, I mentioned these um, spotter series brushes. Now, this is one here, look. So, this is a particular one. So, it's a series 93, it's a spotter series, and this is a Rosemary Co. size 5. And look at the points on that, it's lovely, isn't it? But this is sable. But even though it's sable, they're not too expensive to buy in. I'm going to very lightly, with a damp, clean brush, very lightly, barely touching, two hairs in air again, barely touching the paper, just to lightly soften those marks, just to knock them back. So you can see the effect now, that's really softened it down, but I'm hardly touching the paper at all. Very gentle. Treat it like you treat your partner. Okay, I'll take that back. So very gentle on the paper itself. Right, okay. So that's that one. And I'm gonna come back in again and start thinking about painting the pupil itself. Now, here we go. Now, the pupil, looking at the position on the paper, starts around there. And it comes down. I've already got a mark here where it comes down to. It's a bit of an oval, it's not an egg shape, it's a bit of an oval shape. Just like that. Okay. So that's what this one is so far, so just bear with me a minute, I'll just make sure that you can see this on the camera. I'm coming back in a minute, don't worry. Just making sure that you can see everything I've got on there. Okay, yeah, okay, you can see everything on there. I'll have to double check. We'll see them live. Oh, by the way, this photograph I'm working from is by um, a cracking photographer called um, Peter Brandon, I think it was. Let's have a quick look. Yeah, Peter Brandon. Thank you, Peter. This is your photo, so thank you very much indeed. Um, it's a cracking photo as well. Um, the photograph in question, again, just out of interest there for everybody, is that one there okay so that's your spray lovely photo I know come back off that now let's get back back into it okay right where was I I was working on the pupil wasn't I now as I say this isn't a complete well it's an oval but it's not an egg shape so I've got to make sure 
I can see the distance. I'm looking at the gap between the top of the pupil and the gap between the bottom of the pupil to the bottom of the eye. Now the difference is we have got a shadow coming over there, a very light shadow which I need to add in yet. But it's not dead center in the eye, it really isn't. So I need to make a note of that. Plus also, this edge isn't completely even or completely round all the way around. We need to break this edge up and the way we do that is simply by tapping, stippling again with the very tip of the brush and breaking away in places. So I'm doing that just very lightly. That's it. Very lightly breaking away from the center. We can always fine tune it afterwards if need be. That's not a problem at all. Now you can see that coming to life a bit more. I do think we probably need a little bit more, I'm trying to look at the color, probably a little bit more green in there. Now I'm gonna go for a little bit more French ultramarine. So when I look at my color here, a little bit of French ultramarine in there, that's plenty, just that there, look. So load it, roll it, then dab it on some tissue. And we'll come back in. I want a little bit more of that in there. Just add a bit of green. I don't want to lose that brightness within the eye. And a bit more of the cadmium orange. Just around the, just around the where the pupil is in the middle there, just, just, just to the side of that. Let's try and create the shape a bit more. Now I spend a lot of time just painting the eye when I do a, an animal, a bird, whatever it might be. I always spend a lot of time, as like I said earlier on, it's something I like to look at. You know, when you're doing the rest of the painting, you've got something to focus your eyes on occasionally. You know, to look at some life in the painting already, straight away, right at the beginning of the painting, you've got some life there to look at. That's why I do it, you know? Because people say, why do you paint the eye first? Well, I've done a bit of background on this one, by using masking fluid as well. Um, but in this case, I just want to make sure that I've got something to look at as I do the painting. It's going to go a little bit darker now. I want to check the overall shape of this eye as well because it's a little bit thicker this area here, the actual line. And again, I want to kind of break that line up by stippling. Okay, we've been on live now for 28 minutes. So I will be going very shortly. So if you've got any questions you want to fire at me, then please do so now. Or as I mentioned, if there's anything you want to ask me afterwards, still put a comment down below. It's not a problem. I will see it. I do get notified by, by um, Facebook to say that somebody's commented on that. I'm going to very lightly just outline that bottom eyelid to there. And the same with the top one again, just so I can see where it goes. It kind of cuts in there as well, just to there. That's better. So just know where everything kind of sits and to there, kind of planning it, plotting my way around, kind of mapping everything out so I can see where things are going to go. Now, I want to put that bit of a highlight in. Well, it's not a highlight actually, it's a bit of a shadow first. Now the shadow, take some water off your ferrule, just comes over the top. Try and do it in one or two passes, just to there look. That's where the shadow goes. That's as simple as that. Now that will dry a little bit lighter as well, which will help. As for the highlight, I'm gonna add a little bit of watercolor white in there. Now the one I tend to use, which I said the other day, is this particular, you wanna see this. My, <laughs> my tube is a little bit, um, a little bit worse for wear, as you can see, but this is the SAA opaque white, is the one I tend to use. Okay, and it is um, opaque, literally opaque. Now that's some which are semi-opaque, so make sure you get one which is opaque. I'm going to get a little bit of that white, make it to like a creamy consistency. So it's just about paintable. And then load it and come back in. I want a little bit of a highlight. Tap it. Just about there. A bit more. Finger with watercolor white as well. It does dry that little bit lighter. Or pale, I should have said, there's a bit of a sparkle just in there as well. And one or two, just dotting around within the iris itself. 
just have that extra little bit of sparkle. So there you go, that'll give us some ideas, just to begin with, I'm just going to try a bit more colour in there, I think, off camera, um, how to paint a basic eye on a bird. And uh, there you go. So if you fancy learning more like this, then obviously pop along to my Patreon channel down there, just down there, look.